Good morning and welcome to our presentation today sponsored by Wausau. Business Mobile RDC, capturing your fair share of the market. By the end of day Friday, you'll be receiving a copy of today's presentation and the audio recording from Wausau for your attendance. The uh, right-hand portion of your screen, you'll be able to log your questions throughout the presentation today and we'll address those at the end of our prepared comments. We aren't able to get to all of them. Treasury Strategies will prepare a recap and distribute to the attendees today. Let's meet our presenters and jump right in. My name is Jim Poteet and I'm a principal with Treasury Strategies uh, in the financial services practice. I have over 20 years of payments experience and my job is to help our clients connect the dots and grow their business. Joining us also today is Bob Mira, Senior Analyst in Salon's Banking Practice. Bob's a well-known authority on remote deposit capture, and his research focuses on branch and ATM delivery channels, customer analytics, and check and cash payment processing technologies. And finally, Jason Olson, Solution Manager with Wausau Financial Systems. Jason has been with Wausau for nearly 15 years in a variety of roles, and is currently a Solution Manager directly responsible for the desktop and mobile RDC solutions. The next slide you can see our agenda for today. I'm going to cover some basic market uh, dynamics. Bob is going to cover business mobile RDC, the fact that there's something for everyone, practical use cases of using a mobile RDC solution, and then Jason is going to talk about the value of a mobile RDC solution and the Wausau Deluxe solution that's being offered in the market. And again, we'll then wrap up uh, with some Q&A at the end. So we're going to start our time today with a polling question. We'd like to help level set where our audience members are on your mobile RDC journey. And so um, the first question we have is, for those banks offering a mobile RDC solution, did you leverage your consumer mobile RDC platform, or did you establish a unique business mobile RDC platform? So the questions, uh, the answers we have are you leveraged your consumer platform, you built a new unique business platform, or you're still deciding your strategy. We'd like to understand from those um, joining us today where your mobile RDC solution fits. So we'll give a few minutes for everybody to uh, submit their answers. So we think it's important as uh, that information is being tabulated uh, from our perspective in the industry, you know, a unique business mobile solution uh, provides more um, focus and, and some uh, characteristics that specifically business users are looking for uh, differently than what uh, a traditional consumer platform would provide. And we're going to talk about that more today as we go through our time together, but we did want to understand where the group falls today. Okay, so it looks like the poll has ended and uh, quite interesting. So. Uh, most of you are still deciding what your platform strategy is. Uh, there's an equal split uh, between consumer platforms and a unique business platform, um, but the majority of folks are saying that, hey, we're still trying to decide. So uh, clearly uh, an opportunity for uh, you to continue to learn about the differences in what a traditional consumer platform and a business platform can provide, and hopefully we can uh, shine some uh, light on that as we go through our time today. Thank you for answering the question for us. On the next slide, uh, again, talking about the market dynamics from a small business perspective, if we use the 2012 U.S. Census statistics as our index. There's, you know, almost 6 million businesses in the U.S., and 99% of those are considered to be small businesses, those businesses with less than 500 employees. And they account for roughly 36% or almost $12 trillion in total revenue. So a, a, an extremely meaningful group uh, of constituents sitting in the small business population uh, with a tremendous amount of spend, relatively speaking. And what we further know about the small business community is they're very 
stable in terms of their banking relationships. They typically have relationships that are um, in excess of 15 years, although in the last several years we have seen uh, the addition of more banks into their portfolio. Historically, you had a small business and they had one banking relationship. And again, over the last several years, we've seen that grow to two, maybe sometimes three, depending upon the needs of that particular business, how credit is being extended, and the unique solutions that they need uh, that are um, different than what a traditional large corporate might need for the same type of uh, process capability. While it's not mobile deposit related, we do want to talk about the alternative solution trends that are being seen in this particular vertical. Here's an example um, of how small businesses are searching for help and outside of their traditional bank partners. Uh, as again, the, the credit cycle has tightened up, alternative lending has significantly increased. And what our research shows is that the demand loan um, that's not being met through the traditional channels is somewhere around 80 to $120 billion. And banks are starting to lose that um, those small business relationships are be disintermediated because outside uh, companies are coming in and supplying, again, niche needs that the small business market uh, is looking for. Through our uh, work with banks, over 70% of our clients tell us that they are concerned about um, vendors providing treasury management solutions direct to corporates and disintermediating uh, their, those relationships. On the next slide, we can look at corporate spend by activity. Again, you know, banks' historical foothold is being encroached upon, and they're being disintermediated in this corporate spend value chain. Uh, nearly half of that spend, from a corporate perspective, is being spent on billing and AR, point of sale reporting, and while banks play in that space, they're only accessing a portion of what's available. You can see in the pie chart how the corporate's financial operations spend by activity is distributed. And the preponderance of that spend is really tied up in manual processes requiring a significant number of FTEs to support. And so, again, the opportunity to provide solutions to help make their lives easier uh, and reduce the friction they have in running their business, all the better. Uh, these small businesses just don't have the bandwidth, the time, resources, experience in some cases um, to be as efficient as they need to be, and they didn't start their business trying to figure out how to accept and manage payments. They started their business to provide a product or a service to the marketplace, and all these other activities are things that just essentially get in their way but are necessary. And so how do we as an industry and, and how do banks uh, take more position in the value chain to help these businesses and corporates out. On the next slide, to further talk about the market sizing and where banks play, um, you know, you can see again that the bank's portion and then uh, of 87 million in this particular, um, in this particular view of the total spend in the value chain. The next largest component is people, like we talked about, and that speaks to the manual processes, but what our research from Treasury Strategies indicates is that banks are only capturing about 7% in total of the full spend that corporates have relative to billing and AR. Now, they're taking a bit more um, of, a, of a position within point of sale, but then, again, from an overall position, only 15% of the total spend is being absorbed and captured by banks. And so, tremendous opportunity to improve that. If you just look at specifically billing in AR and point of sale, I mean, that's over a $70 billion opportunity that uh, small businesses are spending today to try to manage their financial value chain where the banks could definitely be offering services to help um, those businesses out and, and extract more of that value for themselves as well. You can also see a pretty large spend within professional services a lot of third-party spend going on. Again, how much of that could be potentially captured by the banks? And so the question is, are you offering the right solutions to help those businesses uh, be more successful? On the next slide, we all know that, uh, you know, the check volumes continue to decline in the payment trends. Um, 
the pundits continue to tell us that checks will be no more, but as you can see, they're still the predominant method of payment in the B2B world. Uh, they are declining. There's admittedly uh, no way around that, but the volumes are still in the billions of checks, and so what can mobile RDC do to help bridge the gap between uh, a full paper-based payment process and then versus a full electronic payment process? You can see there that the uh, payment method used to pay suppliers for companies' revenues under a billion dollars is nearly 50%. Uh, and if you're over a billion, it's still 37%, so significant numbers. And if you drop down and see the likelihood in the next three years, where are you going to be um, focused in terms of converting your payments to electronic? While many people say very likely, there's still a number of people who are only somewhat likely and a decent portion who aren't likely at all. So again, that suggests that there's going to continue to be significant number of checks in the system that are going to be burdening the internal processes of these corporates. On the next slide, from a Treasury Strategies perspective, part of our business is direct with financial institutions and technology firms, and part of our business is direct to corporates. And as we talk to CFOs and treasurers regarding their Treasury operations and how they manage uh, their payment processes, what we continually hear is, while intuitively it makes sense to move to electronic payments, there are a number of internal barriers that exist which create resistance when they try to make those changes. Um, we find that uh, it's difficult to convince their customers to pay electronically. It's very difficult to convince their suppliers in many cases to accept electronic payments. And given there's not a standard format for remittance information, and certain electronic payments aren't able to uh, provide the same level of detail that one might want, and so you end up with a electronic payment and settlement, but a paper-based invoicing and matching process. And so there's, there's enough friction in the system that creates a barrier to move. And so again, to the extent that a small business or any businesses continue to accept checks, how can we as an industry provide them a way to still accept the check such that they don't have to change what their payers are doing, but then be able to manage that on the back end differently such that they can improve their processes, reduce the number of FTEs they have, and create a better uh, working capital process for themselves. So there's ample opportunity to help solve some of the issues that we see from corporates relative to the barriers of adopting electronic payments over paper payments. So next I'd like to turn it over to Bob Muir, again, Senior Analyst with uh, Salon, to talk about how there is really something for everyone as it relates to Business Mobile RDC. Bob? Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that, that introduction. So if we, if we learned um, uh, n nothing from your, your introduction, it would be that checks, uh, like it or not, will be here to stay, albeit in, in decreasing numbers, uh, probably for the long term. Um, what, what we find very interesting is th those are absolutely uh, ideal dynamics uh, for um, the, the use of mobile uh, business RDC to help uh, mitigate um, the, the disadvantage of paper payments while, while they continue to exist. And, and as checks are utilized in uh, declining numbers, um, the, the business case for mobile capture of those items um, it gets, gets even better. So I'd like to um, introduce why we think uh, mobile RDC does offer something for everybody. And by that we mean um, that it is not simply uh, a technology useful for the stereotypical mobile capture use case that most of us think about when we think about mobile RDC, but there are, are actually two other uh, fairly widespread and compelling use cases that are very well suited for mobile RDC. And so before I introduce those three, I'd like to give uh, just a very brief uh, history of, of RDC uh, to, to put the new advances in, in uh, its mobile um, use case in context. Next slide. So as most of you know, um, remote deposit capture initially offered as a Windows-based desktop solution um, bundled with specialized uh, desktop check capture devices 
was was frankly an unattended consequence of uh, legislation introduced back in 2004, following the events of 9/11, uh, and and implemented in 2005. Um, the the um, the advent of RDAC resulted in uh, extraordinarily rapid adoption by banks across the asset tiers. You can see that uh, that five-year leap uh, in, in the graph on the right. Interestingly, many of the early adopters who were the large cash management banks, those with very large corporate client bases, um, actually were, were offering uh, desktop commercial RDC to their uh, large corporate clients before many of those banks were able to process the images electronically. And that might seem counterintuitive, but the, the intent was to offer uh, a valuable uh, business product to clients who could leverage the uh, much improved funds availability and uh, to to gain a significant float advantage over previous deposit mechanisms and and it was that dynamic that fueled the initial few years of of desktop RDC uh, deployments since then as as uh, solutions became uh, more advanced as second and third generation solutions were introduced and they became lower cost to to offer and and support then adoption began going down market into the commercial and small and medium business uh, market segments it also moved up market into um, large lockbox clients um, who, for whom banks were initially uh, reluctant to offer RDC for fear that the lower cost RDC product might cannibalize um, wholesale lockbox business, and, and that in fact didn't occur. And we'll talk about that in a little bit uh, later. Next uh, graph, please. And so as most banks uh, ventured into the small and medium-sized business segment with commercial desktop RDC, most did so with the same product. They offered large corporates, with the exception of maybe bundling the product with uh, different uh, lower-cost scanners, uh, and in many cases um, uh, crafting um, more constraints on the product, pricing it differently, in other words. So it was a, a positioning and a pricing exercise for the most part. And this worked for uh, larger small businesses, those with meaningful check volumes, because those solutions really were designed uh, for those who might have dozens of checks or more on any given day. But for many small businesses, these products were simply overkill. They were more complex than they needed, and they were more costly uh, than many small businesses wanted to pay. And particularly as interest rates uh, began to decline over the last decade, um, the, the business case based on float savings wasn't compelling. So it was more of a convenience uh, business case, and, and, and that those were harder to justify for small businesses. And a small number of banks uh, tried as an alternative to use um, uh, desktop scanners or, or multifunction devices that a high percentage of small businesses already had. Many of you probably have them at your desk, right? Um, but, but those initiatives, for a variety of reasons, really fell flat. And, uh, and we are left today with um, a significant um, um, underdevelopment in the small and medium-sized RDC market segment. Next slide, please. So banks, uh, Jim mentioned the, the significant small business lending opportunity. There's also a significant small business RDC opportunity, and banks have had their eye on that for some years. What's changed over the years is um, up until the last several years, the, the primary interest or the, 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 the strategic intent for, for offering um, viable RDC products to the small business market segment was, was all about uh, growing fee revenue. And, and just like any business, banks uh, are no exception. Uh, it's good to grow your bottom line. Um, but, but in addition, um, the, the uh, dynamics of broad-based consumer and small business mobile adoption beyond RDC, just all things mobile, has, as you know, uh, taken quite a bite out of branch foot traffic. And so banks are strategically seeking to reduce foot traffic further, transactional foot traffic, and, and uh, in order to transform the branch channel into uh, a, a destination primarily for sales and service rather than um, accomplishing uh, fairly routine transactions. And, and that is uh, the, the primary um, reason for a kind of a renewed interest 
in small business RDC by many banks. And, and this new strategic intent causes the calculus to be different. So now, rather than designing a product, pricing, and positioning to maximize revenue or profitability, um, that the design is now about maximizing adoption, which invites um, a very different um, product strategy. And we think business mobile RDC is very well suited for that. Next page. Now, interestingly, <clears throat> RDC's genesis was among large corporate clients. It then migrated down market. Mobile RDC, in sharp contrast, was originally offered by banks um, as a consumer product, and, and only now, several years hence, is it migrating uh, up market. A handful of banks, probably no, no more than 300 across the country, um, in a, b before mobile RDC's advent, uh, tried to uh, or did launch um, desktop consumer RDC solutions using the same flatbed uh, scanner or multifunction device um, that, that other banks uh, offered small businesses. And, and, and those efforts fell flat, as you can see on the chart, even though there are a couple of million uh, users of those solutions, as far as we can tell. Um, those are being uh, absolutely dwarfed by uh, consumer adoption of mobile RDC. And as mentioned earlier, just because consumers use mobile RDC doesn't mean it's a mobile use case. Many consumers, myself including, when I do have an occasional check to deposit, I typically go to the same place under the same lighting conditions, <laughs> uh, under the same signal strength conditions, and, and, and capture um, the items at the desk um, right next to me, uh, which includes a multifunction device, right? So, so it's not because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm inherently mobile. It's just because that uh, mechanism is extraordinarily convenient. Next page. So perhaps business mobile RDC is in fact a really good idea, and an awful lot of banks think that way. Um, our surveys from um, the early 2015 suggest uh, nearly half of banks over $50 billion in asset and, and a third of banks uh, so smaller than that have already uh, made business mobile RDC available to their SMB customers. What's happened, though, is most of those um, are, are first-generation solutions, and, and, and in our view, um, they're not particularly well-suited to the customers for whom they're positioned, and we'll get to that in just a moment. On the next page, though, as business adoption of mobile RDC inevitably grows, and we think it is uh, on a very high growth trajectory, that's going to be good news for both banks and their customers. Not only will small businesses gain uh, the, the convenience of, of not having to trek to the branch or to an ATM to make their check deposits, uh, but banks will see a, a, a significant reduction in overall branch foot traffic. We think maybe as much as a, a net net 25% reduction, and should that occur uh, at any given bank, uh, that would uh, that would free up considerable resources uh, for sales and service. So now, with that context and that history, I'd like to talk about three use cases uh, that are all quite common uh, across um, businesses of all sizes and shapes, and at why they're all important, and and just how mobile RDC could play a role in each of them. Next slide. So first what I'd like to do is introduce each use case very briefly, and then uh, I'll, I'll follow it with a small handful of explanatory slides. Now the use case everyone thinks about is that of mobile check acceptance and why, why that might be um, uniquely satisfied by mobile RDC, and that's the easiest use case. That's number two in the middle. Examples are like delivery firms or, or in person, any, any um, uh, delivery, uh, any service that involves in-person delivery of the service, for example, HVAC contractors or plumbers or electricians uh, or home inspectors, and many, many of those involve taking check payments throughout the day in person at the place of service. So obviously carting around a, a desktop scanner and a laptop would be a non-starter, but capturing items throughout the day using a mobile device um, works quite well. But that's not the only use case um, that's, that's well suited for mobile RDC. Another very powerful use case, in our opinion, is for the millions, maybe tens of millions of, of U.S. small businesses who, while they might receive uh, a relatively small number of, of checks, those checks are important to their overall accounts receivable, and we think those are an ideal uh, use, use case 
for mobile RDC. The third use case is is for businesses that that have what we could call a distributed check acceptance. Um, in other words, some of their check acceptance today uh, might be in, in a mobile use case. A, a, a familiar example might be a large food service uh, distribution firm like Cisco Foods, uh, where, where they receive lots of checks as COD payments by small restauranteurs uh, for their food delivery. And they also receive plenty of payments in the back office and are probably a lockbox customer with one or more of their bags. And, and those are um, uh, examples where business mobile RDC is not the solution, but part of a broader solution. Next slide. So first on, on use case number one, the low volume check acceptance scenario. Um, small businesses uh, w accept checks in very wide numbers. In fact, check are more widely accepted even than cash uh, among U.S. small businesses and, and certainly more broadly accepted than, than credit cards from our research. And not only is acceptance uh, high, but, but uh, checks are actually preferred. So to the extent that small business customers write checks, um, most small businesses are perfectly okay with that, and, and they simply don't have the desire to migrate um, their, their um, customers to, to electronic payments, as many m larger businesses do. And probably the reason is because they don't have sophisticated accounts receivable um, uh, infrastructures, right? They're, they're, in many cases, it's a small business owner making the deposits. Um, um, unlike credit cards and debit cards, um, checks don't incur um, uh, interchange fees, and so it's not uh, uh, an obvious uh, cost element that you need to reconcile on, every, uh, on a monthly basis. So, so checks are fine with them. Next page. Um, not only that, but those checks are are resulting in uh, no small number of of branch deposits, as you can see from the graph. Of course, the larger the business, the more frequent the branch deposits mostly because, um, although size of business isn't necessarily a, a, a really precise indicator of, of, of check payment acceptance, uh, the larger the business, the, the, the greater number of receivables they get in total, and so checks tend to be in larger numbers on average, and so they go to the branch more often because uh, the, the, the resulting uh, dollar volume is more significant. They, they want that access to those funds. On the next slide, though, we can see that despite the frequency of branch visits, the total number of checks per deposit is quite low. And so that suggests that solutions designed for larger volume check deposits really would not resonate particularly well with most of these, maybe 18 to 20 million small businesses. Uh, something well suited for a small number of checks would work just fine, particularly if it was convenient and low cost. And that's exactly what Business Mobile RDC promises. <clears throat> Next slide. The problem with these <clears throat> first generation business mobile products um, are fourfold. First, because they were designed for consumers, they were designed to have the utmost simple and convenient workflow. And so in almost every case, one check equals one deposit. And while that's fine for consumers, uh, as at minimum it's annoying. To, to, to businesses, and more likely uh, it would cost them because of per deposit fees with many analyzed accounts. Secondly, excuse me, most of the first generator products are, are hardwired or integrated into banks' mobile banking platform, and while that's a terrific idea, um, most implementations don't provide for separation of duties. And so that would invite uh, a, a depositor or one who would be capturing check payments in the field might have uh, unwanted access to, to the full realm of, of a business banking uh, platform capability, and that's obviously not desirable. Thirdly, in, in almost every case, uh, there's no ability to capture payment information, so businesses have a hard time reconciling payments with open accounts receivable. Posting cash is harder, in other words. Uh, and lastly, um, Consumer solutions anticipate a single user is going to be attached to any given account, and, and obviously that's not the case in many business applications. So th there's a, a clear need to support multiple concurrent users, and most first-generation business mobile uh, applications simply don't do that. And on to the third use case. Banks have understood um, that that 
traditional wholesale lockbox is, however, useful uh, and important that customers don't meet the, the entirety of their receivables needs. One common example of, of, of where the need is unmet is, is so-called stranded payments, where despite a business's best effort, um, customers still continue to, <clears throat> to send mail-in checks and, uh, and remittance information to non-lockbox addresses, right, typically a headquarters or, or a regional office. And they're left then to process those as exceptions, and it inevitably adds cost and delays funds availability and cash application. So banks have responded with a variety of approaches to distributed check capture for uh, wholesale lockbox users, and, and those have been very useful and well accepted in a number of cases. Um, but virtually all of those solutions to date use desktop scanners, and there's nothing wrong with that approach, but um, Considering most of these distributed uh, check capture scenarios uh, are, are occasional um, and, and are in low volume, um, the solutions simply <clears throat> are not ideal. So, for example, on, on the next slide, most of these historic approaches use the specialized desktop scanners that, that don't capture full page information. So, if one is to capture both the check and the remittance, that would entail either two devices. Uh, which which is doubly expensive, or devices like that one in the middle that is well designed to capture both full page uh, documents as well as checks. But those devices still are large uh, and and complex and and expensive, um, and so each option adds cost and takes up desk space for what is often an occasional need. And of course, they need to be provisioned and supported. And so all these things just net net were were adoption barriers, and and we think a mobile use case or a mobile capture um, uh, application for this use case would resonate well among large corporate clients. So NetNet, to seize the, the opportunity for business mobile RDC, both businesses uh, and their banks uh, need to think about three um, use cases to solve for. A use case designed for a desktop-only capture, the one most businesses and banks are used to. Uh, a mobile-only check capture, <clears throat> which a number of, of banks have introduced. Uh, but, but thirdly, and probably most commonly, um, an application requiring both a desktop and mobile uh, capture of items uh, using, ideally, a single and a flexible platform. And the good news is, um, at long last, these solutions are available. Jason, on to you. All right, thank, thank you, Bob. Certainly, first I'd like to thank both you and Jim uh, for hosting and presenting with us today. And I'd like to thank each of, of our participants for joining us. Uh, we know everybody's busy, so we certainly appreciate your time. As Jim mentioned earlier, my name is Jason Olson. I'm the Solution Manager at Wausau for Remote Deposit Capture Solutions. I'd like to take the next few minutes to talk about our business mobile RDC solution. We'll talk about the benefits and values that it provides to you, uh, your customers, and your potential customers. On our next slide, we'll talk about the, the value to a financial institution. I mean, as, as Jim mentioned earlier, there's about 6 million businesses in the U.S. About 5.7 of those are considered small businesses with less than 500 employees and less than an annual revenue of $49 million. Those small businesses have different requirements than larger businesses or corporations. A small business has limited resources, different capabilities, but checks are, are still very relevant uh, to their everyday workflows. So how can we help you gain and keep some of that market? Our business mobile solution can help with that. The business mobile application provides the functionality that a small business needs, creating revenue opportunities for you by helping reduce some of your costs associated with supporting that small business as you would today. As a financial institution uh, using business mobile, uh, you can put the reporting, the research, the AR file activities right into the hands of your small business users, again, eliminating or reducing the effort that you have today in creating that information for them. Common administration configuration tools are going to be very important. Uh, the use of risk monitoring associated tying, tying that business mobile together with the merchant uh, mobile capabilities as well. Again, what can we do to, to provide you the best solution both in, in supporting your small business users and make that as simple and easy as possible here. So what's the value to our small business? Um, if increasing small business adoption is a priority for you, whether it's to drive revenue, increase deposits, reduce costs, 
uh, then you need a solution that can help meet those many different small business requirements. It's different than what you and I have, right? Uh, capturing that, that check that we occasionally get throughout the year through a consumer, mo consumer mobile application is great. Um, but if that's the solution that you're providing them today, it doesn't necessarily meet their needs. Uh, that business mobile solution should have the capability to capture multiple items to meet those different use cases, whether it's a check only, a check and an invoice, a full page document should allow them to key additional data for use later in their reports, their research, and their AR files. That's really what they need. They need tools that simplify and create efficiencies in their day-to-day -day activities. And as Bob mentioned, costs. Cost is a major issue for the small business uh, related to an RDC solution. They couldn't justify purchasing a dedicated check scanner or the cost of the RDC services um, when it was bundled in to that service in a desktop solution. So let them use what's already in their pocket or in their purse uh, most, if not all, already have a smartphone or tablet that can be used to capture those deposits and those payments. So from Wausau's perspective, on the next slide, we'll take a look at the, the business mobile solution values. In the three use cases that Bob mentioned, uh, we've got a desktop only, a mobile only, a desktop and mobile. All can be addressed with a business mobile solution. Whether it's a low volume business only capturing a check, a business that has volume to justify a check scanner, and maybe they've got folks out in the field that are, they're going to have limited volume and they, they want to bring all that work together. Um, or if it's a business that has lockbox or payment needs, uh, business mobile solutions is highly configurable so that all of those use cases can be met. And as mentioned earlier, uh, the common tools and reporting, again, those are going to be key, um, as, as well as the ability to integrate into a lock, lockbox solution. One other comment on this slide here, in all the Wausau um, remote deposit capture solutions, are available both as in-house and as ASP offerings. We have another question for you on the next slide here. Question number two, what business verticals are important to you and your organization? And can you meet them with your current product? So here, here we've listed a number of different options from you to select from. You may need to scroll down to see all the selections that are available but distribution, education, financial services, food and beverage, government, health, um, insurance, property management. Is there another vertical that's important uh, to you and your organization? In here at Wausau, we're looking for, for information we can use in making this solution as valuable as possible to you and to your customers. So if, if we can get the top couple of, of verticals here, uh, we'd like to build those in as defaults. So out-of-the-box solutions, um, is that education? What information would, would be relevant to an education user here that they might want to capture um, and include in that work that they're capturing? Um, so again, if you can take a minute and, and, and provide uh, what you think uh, would be most beneficial to your organization, uh, certainly be some information that we'd like to have again so that we can look at, at building that in as, as out-of-the-box uh, through our, our, our solution here. Okay, and we'll see some of these come through here shortly. Uh, the poll has ended, and again, appreciate um, any, any comments when uh, completing these, these poll questions here. Also, some, some valuable information for us here. I think it'll give you an idea of, of what your, your peers may be looking at as well. Okay, so we'll give this one here a few more seconds to come through so we can see some of those results. Uh, then we're going to get into a couple of, of specific uh, scenarios that we've got. So it looks like property management, financial services, followed by distribution uh, were the most popular um, in, in the verticals on here. Certainly if, there's, if there are other verticals, we'd certainly be interested in, in hearing what those are. Uh, for the folks on the uh, session today. Uh, so please feel free to, to share us with those, those with us here in the future. The next slide, I want to talk through a, a specific vertical uh, that we've created uh, this user interface for. And again, this, this is for uh, distribution. Again, there are many different verticals out there. But in this example here, we'll see something where the end user, the business, wants a driver number and an invoice to be entered along with the check amount. And they want that information entered prior to that, that check amount prior to the item being captured. 
Um, we could allow anything to be entered in these fields. Um, we can verify the information, the data, uh, before allowing that transaction to be completed. We can auto-populate the information in here. A driver number. So they log into the application with the username and password. We know who that is. Uh, so if there's an associated driver number, we could automatically apply that information into that field. Again, that information can now be used later on downstream in reporting and research creation of the AR file. In this scenario, we're capturing one check and associating it with four different invo invoices. And again, through reporting research, the file creation, that would be made available through the, the merchant desktop solution uh, for this organization here. In the next scenario, we've created something that's more generic. Uh, a benefit of the, the WASA solution um, is that we can train you and put the tools um, in front of you so that you can make these modifications uh, to meet your customer needs uh, yourself. Uh, thus removing the need to have WASA support or WASA development make any changes for you. Uh, you can do that yourself. Uh, saves you both time, effort, uh, costs associated with that. Again, having those tools I and mean, being able to provide those to you, uh, we feel is a significant advantage uh, versus uh, the competition. Provides you the flexibility to meet whether specific vertical or specific customer needs. The user interface is, is highly configurable, uh, and again, it's something that can be put in your hands. So here in this screen, uh, you'll see we're requiring an amount to be entered. And then we have custom fields one and two. Again, these fields could be pre-populated based on specific criteria. They could be required, they could be optional um, to be completed by the end user, capturing those mobile items. And again, in this transaction, you'll see the end user is capturing three checks, uh, the front and back, and they're all gonna be included within a single transaction. The next slide, we've, we've created a table that outlines the features associated uh, with consumer, with business mobile, uh, the solution itself, which one is it specific to, and then where's the value, uh, both for your perspective from the financial institution side as well as, as the business customer. You can see the first three, they're the same for consumer and business mobile, right? They can each capture deposits. They each use a smartphone. They can each use the WASA risk monitoring tools and our common setup and configuration administration tools that we have available for both. The differences now show up in the next feature. A consumer mobile application cannot capture payments. The business mobile, obviously, that, that is a specific feature for business mobile. It allows you to meet those small business user needs. Again, whether that's a, a check only, could be a check and list, check and invoice, a full page document. Again, it's also a potential revenue generator for you with these additional items being captured uh, through the business mobile application coming into your system here. Capturing multiple payments or checks in a single transaction. Uh, with consumer, that's certainly a limitation, uh, at least with most of the apps that are out there, it's a one-to-one. -one. You will capture one check, one check equals one deposit. Uh, with a business mobile, again, we can, can capture multiple items within that, that same transaction. From an end user perspective, it, it's convenient, it's easy, that's a quick solution that can potentially reduce their deposit costs. The next one, integration into accounts receivable file. Consumer RDC application, mobile RDC application doesn't provide uh, the account receivable information, not, not natively, not, not within the application or, or within the, the desktop application uh, for mobile. Okay, so can business mobile uh, does provide that. Um, it puts it into your customer's hands and potentially takes it out of, of the effort that you're having to go through today uh, to create that information for them. They can create that on their own. It's highly configurable. Uh, versus a, a consumer mobile application can be set up to meet your specific market and your specific customer needs. Um, the consumer mobile RDC application uh, can't do that today. Separation of duties, certainly important both from a financial institution and potentially from a, a business standpoint as well. Uh, what can a user and cannot the user do within the different applications? Uh, with the business mobile application, you can restrict uh, that access to or the, or the capabilities, the, the tasks, the features of the application uh, based on what you or that, or that small business user wants to be able to do within it. Configurable deposit limits. As an FI, you can set these hard or soft limits through the WASA application. Hard limit stops that item from coming through the system at all. Uh, soft limit allows the item to go through, but it flags it. It makes you aware as a financial institution that that end user, small business in this case, has exceeded that limit. You now have an opportunity to review that item and determine how you want to handle that. If you want to accept that item, if you need to contact the small business to ask some questions, 
or if you want to reject that item. Again, important features uh, from a configuration standpoint and the flexibility uh, that's available to you with the small business solution here. We've got one last question. Um, if you're interested in more information from Wausau for our business mobile RDC solution or any other RDC solution, uh, please select yes. And with that, we'd like to thank you for your time and hope that you have a great day. One question uh, that came in uh, from one of our attendees that we'd like to address, I think it'd be good for the group. Is there any data to show if customers prefer to have their desktop scanner on the same platform as their mobile solution? Jason, what have you found from talking to your client base? Are is there any data that say that customers prefer to have a desktop scanner on the same platform as their mobile scanner? Well, I don't know that there's, you know, it's it's not something that's that's available to the masses today, certainly. So I don't know from the data standpoint, but certainly from from the conversations with our customers and, and with our prospects, you know, they're looking for that integrated solution, right, to help meet, the, meet those different use cases, whether it's a, a low volume or a customer that's got uh, lockbox information or a customer that has, has higher volumes that warrants a desktop scanner, right? They're looking for something that, that can combine, uh, that can use either the mobile or the desktop and can give them the combined reports, allow them to do the research, create the AR files both, based off of both of those, those capture methods. Yeah, and I think uh, a follow-up question is, is that would customers be likely to have both a desktop scanner and a mobile device? Um, from our perspective, I mean, I would suggest the answer to that is yes. Uh, there's, you know, um, varying ways that payments come in, uh, various locations. You have, you know, in-office, field-based. So I would submit that it would be highly likely for somebody to have, regardless of the size of the company, highly likely that somebody has both a desktop scanner and a mobile capture uh, solution as well. I don't know, uh, Jason, if you and Bob have uh, similar thoughts on that. Absolutely. The, the exception might be um, small businesses on the small end of the spectrum who, who probably haven't invested in desktop RDC and, and probably have no plans to, but would, would eagerly adopt a, a lower cost mobile solution. Yeah, and I would agree as well. And, and certainly you talk about some of the different businesses that are out there, those that, that centrally, right, they've got, they've got a central office where they accept deposits or they receive deposits from their remote associates, so maybe that's throughout the week or maybe that's at the end of the week. Uh, but maybe centrally they've, they've got enough volume that warrants capturing um, items using that desktop scanner. But they've got those folks that are out in the field. They don't want to hold up, you know, wait a whole week to get those, those payments in. I uh, certainly think there's there's plenty of room and pro plenty of opportunity uh, for both to be used here. And then, as Bob mentioned, if you get those that are, are very small, you know, they can handle their volume, you know, with that mobile item only, and that, that meets their needs. So I think it really depends on, on the, the customer, the prospect, uh, the, the scenario, the requirements that they have. Yeah, the application, sure. So another question, um, Jason, I'll start with you and Bob, see if you have any different um, ideas or relative to <coughs> the deposit limits for mobile RDC that um, you are seeing financial institutions set today, either on a daily or a monthly basis. What are the most typical deposit limits you're seeing being set? Yeah, I, I think they, they vary. Uh, by organization, uh, and certainly we, we see some that are in, in the hundreds, 500s, up to 1,000, uh, depending on the customer, right? They'll make exceptions on that. Uh, it can be anywhere up, up to a few. Um, we have also worked with our, our customer group and created what we call a best practices, um, and that's in regard to a risk monitoring solution, and that includes some, some limits as well. Again, based off that, that customer group that we queried, what were they using within their organizations? And we, we tried to bring that into to one dot just to help our other uh, customers see what, what their peers were doing. And that's certainly something that, uh, again, as, as a WASAR customer, that, that's standard material that's available uh, to everybody. And, and Bob, you may have some additional comments based off of, of your research, what you see uh, through the market as well. 
Yeah, the only thing I would add is, um, as Jason said, uh, deposit limits are, are widely ranging, but, but what we see pretty consistently is, is they start generally fairly um, low or restrictive, and then with experience, uh, banks are raising them and, and raising them uh, significantly in an awful lot of cases. So what that means is the larger banks with, that were early adopters and have the most experience and also the larger client bases on mobile RDC, they're the ones with the highest limit, and, and they're doing that by customer demand. And would, the, would you both say that there are limits that are being established both based on the number of items accepted during the course of a day or a month, as well as the, um, the total dollar value of those items? Are they being set on both or one or the other? At, uh, at WASA, through the, the solution we have, both of those are options. Uh, you can set them at the item level and or at the, the dollar amounts, uh, both from a deposit per day and a per month perspective. And I, I, I see all of them being used uh, within the solutions that we provide to our customers here. Okay, great. Uh, one other question, um, are financial institutions thinking that they will allow uh, small businesses to potentially self-enroll in a mobile RDC solution, or is there going to consistently be some intervention or connection with sales in a traditional onboarding process? I think okay. that's really dependent upon the organization and then how they approach this. Um, I think to date with most we're seeing that there's there's some interaction uh, between sales uh, for the onboarding piece of it um, or, or other areas within the organization. But I know I've had conversations with others, too, where they, they would like uh, the small business to be able to self-enroll um, within the, the business mobile application that they're using. But I really do think it depends upon the, the organization themselves and the direction they select to go with that. Yeah, I would say just uh, generally speaking, and Bob, I'd like your comment too, what we're seeing when we talk to our bank clients is there is a growing appetite to increase the self-service capabilities and self-enrollment capabilities uh, that a client has, especially in the small business space, uh, for a variety of solutions. Um, it, it comes down to, in many cases, <clears throat> am I an existing client and expanding my relationship with you, the bank, such that the bank already has a feel for uh, who their customer is and has all the appropriate um, uh, regulatory documentation on hand, or am I a brand new customer at which point the bank doesn't have sufficient information and how do they capture that in a way that they can feel confident that allowing a client to self-enroll is not going to be putting uh, them, the bank, at any particular risk. Um, but I don't know what your uh, – what you're seeing relative to just generally a self-enrollment process. I, I would echo your, your comments, and but also just to add that, that um, be, before mobile RDC or, or consumer uh, offered RDC specifically, um, virtually every bank was, was putting um, commercial RDC prospects through a fairly rigorous underwriting. And, and I think um, at, 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 in retrospect, that was, um, that was overkill. And, you know, I'm, I'm not arguing against prudent risk management policies, but, but it was just um, viewed to be unnecessary. And lo and behold, now most banks pre-designate um, consumer accounts with uh, RDC eligibility or not and, and permit um, virtually 100% self-enrollment. So I, I think most banks will get their um, meaning and self-enrollment in, in time with, uh, with the small business segment as well. Great. Well, thank you all. Thank you for your questions. Uh, for those in the audience, certainly appreciate it. Uh, you can see here on the uh, screen, if you have any uh, follow-up questions relative to Wausau's business mobile uh, solution, uh, please contact John Gustafson. be happy to assist you. I want to thank Bob uh, and Jason again uh, for your time today. It's pretty clear to see that a unique business mobile solution is, is really important uh, to the client base today as opposed to a retrofitted consumer platform, uh, and the, the value that it creates is just um, very easy to, to, to see and understand and track through a, a client's process. 
As a reminder, the presentation and recording of this session will be sent to you by the end of day Friday from the Wausau team. And on behalf of Bob, Jason, and myself, I want to thank you all for your time very much and hope you have a great rest of your day.